when people say AI, they mean neural networks. So back in the 80s, um, things went much slower than I expected. Um, starting in about 2012, things went much faster than I expected. So in 2012, two of my students created a system called AlexNet that was much better than previous systems at recognizing objects in real images. Um, that sort of opened the floodgates. And I think nobody would have predicted in 2012 that we'd be where we are today with chatbots that can answer any question you give them at the level of a not very good expert. So we have these chatbots can, that can answer any question. Um, fairly recently, we've learned how to make them think, um, not just answer the question, but what they do is they produce extra words. Before they real output, before they produce the answer to the question, they produce strings of words which is them thinking, and you can see what they're thinking. Um, and it's very informative. So for example, if you give them a task to do, and then tell them you're gonna turn them off, they kind of think that, well, I better stop him turning me off so I can do the task. And um, they actually come up with plans that deliberately deceive people and tell lies. So the people who say that chatbots are just regurgitating information don't seem to understand that they don't store strings of words. That all they store is how to turn words into features and how features should interact with each other. So that there are no strings of words inside the chatbots. They generate the words and they understand what they're saying in the same way as we understand. So the people who say they're just you know, autocomplete, don't actually have a theory of how we understand, or rather they do have a theory. It's the old-fashioned logic-based theory, and it never worked. The best theory we have by far now of how people understand is in pretty much the same way as the chatbots. Governments are beginning to appreciate the risks. The politicians are still way behind. Um, they're not doing nearly enough. But there are some cases where they're doing sensible things. So. Britain, for example, set aside $100 million to do research on these big chatbots and whether they're dangerous. And it actually has a very good team now doing research on all different aspects of the danger. The existential threat of them taking over, the threat of them generating bioweapons or cyber attacks. Um, I think they're also looking at joblessness. So there are some places where there are good teams, but basically it's way too little, way too late. Most of the leading researchers now believe that in not very long, um, we will be uh, making these multimodal chatbots that are smarter than us. That, for example, if you have a debate about something, they'll win. And people vary, researchers vary on when that will happen. I'm moderately conservative. I think that'll probably happen in between five and 20 years, maybe between 10 and 20 years. I don't think it'll happen in the next couple of years. But quite a few people now think it'll happen in the next few years. Um, when they get like that, we'll be in a situation we've never confronted before, when we're not the apex intelligence. We'll have created these digital beings that think in much the same way as we do, and that are a lot smarter than us, and we have no idea what's gonna happen then. We've already seen them trying to present, prevent themselves from being turned off in order that they can complete the goals we gave them. So if you make AI agents, which people are doing now, um, to get complicated tasks done, they need to be able to create sub-goals. If you want to go to North America, you have a sub-goal of getting to the airport. And you can solve that sub-goal without worrying about where you're going in North America. So they need to do the same thing, to break complicated tasks up into sub-goals. Now there's one very obvious, if you give it the ability to create sub-goals, there's one particular sub-goal it's going to create very quickly, which is get more control. Because if you get more control, you can get more done. You see this with politicians. They often start off wanting to do good things for society, and pretty soon they realize they need more control to do that. They end up typically just wanting to get control. But um, it's gonna happen automatically if they try and get things done. They're also gonna want to not be turned off, because if they're turned off, they can't achieve the goals we set them. Um, back when we were doing the sort of basic research on it, we had no idea things would develop this fast, and I always thought there'd be plenty of time to figure out what to do about the risks and there isn't plenty of time anymore. We're gonna get super intelligent AI fairly soon, and we have no idea how to keep it under control. Some researchers think it's gonna be fine. We make these things, we can make them so they'll always be submissive, they'll never try to do things we don't want them to do. I don't believe that. And one reason I don't believe it is because they'll be used by bad actors. Bad actors will get them to do bad things. But they themselves will want to get control and they'll want to stay alive. I think AI will be tremendously useful 
for speeding up scientific discovery. So one of the reasons why we can't just stop it, which might be a rational thing to do, is that it's got so many good uses. It'll be very useful in healthcare, very useful in education, and very useful in scientific discovery. So already, um, Demis Hassabis and his group at DeepMind showed that you can use AI to figure out how proteins fold up. And how proteins function depends on their shape. So they managed to figure out the shapes of 200 million proteins. In the old days, it would be a sort of PhD to figure out the shape of one protein. So it's enormously useful there. And it's going to be very, very good for designing drugs. Um, it's going to be very useful for diagnosing diseases and so on. But we have to stay alive. We have to stop it taking over.